It's the 1980s. The Cold War is getting a little hot. There's a rampant drug problem and Michael Jackson is on the loose. But there's a way bigger issue at hand. You see, there's no gamer girls. In steps Fukio Mitsuji. I think that's how his name goes. Uh, two semesters of Japanese class has gone to waste. Anyways, he's from the game company Taito and he knows a solution to this problem. He's going to make games for couples. Issue solved, right? Not only does he tap into the female player market, but he gets the added male players as well. Problem is, well, he needs to figure out what girls would like in a video game. He ended up with stacks of papers and many ideas. The answer? Well, it was bubbles. Yeah, girls like bubbles, right? Or something? Oh, and dinosaurs. Yeah, I can't explain that one. And so came the arcade game Bubble Bobble. Released in 1986, it was popular. So popular that it was ported to numerous consoles, including the NES in 1988. Now, it goes without saying that the port was also a hit with Western audiences, even getting an NES sequel called Bubble Bobble Part 2. But wait a sec, before that came out, there was Rainbow Islands, the story of Bubble Bobble 2. That, I guess, was the true sequel? No, 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 that can't be, because there's also a Bubble Bobble 2 for the Sega Saturn. There's also a million spin-offs like Puzzle Bobble and Revolution This and Evolution That. Man, talk about screwed continuity. Well, let's just talk about the NES game. This is the version I've played the most. It follows two dudes named Bub and Bob. Very Japanese sounding, right? More like your uncles from Alabama. Or no, I've seen Bubblin and Bobblin. Now that's pretty cool. Anyways, their girlfriends have wandered into a cave known as the Cave of Monsters. Man, how dumb can you be? Well, it's the job of the duo to rescue them, but they've been transformed into dragons that shoot bubbles. Yeah, it's weird, but it's from Japan, so I mean. As a kid, this was like the only video game I could ever get my mom to play, and my grandma. I guess Mitsuji really knew what he was doing. While editing this, I checked the long play of this game, and look at the top comment. Nice. Alright, let's dive in. To rescue your girl, you'll need to traverse 100 levels of increasing difficulty, with the final level being a boss fight. The gameplay is comprised of jumping around platforms, trapping enemies in bubbles, touching them to murder them, and collecting rewards for points. Now, how did that come out of a dead body? What I think makes this game so enjoyable is just the simple fact that each time you play, you discover something new. Like this book? I've never seen it. What do you think it does? Did you think, shake the whole screen, wiping out all the enemies? How about this? Or that? What do you think that does? See, that's what I'm talking about. It might be a new weapon, a new item, a new enemy, a new level, you name it. Speaking of levels, there's way more than 100 of them. Once you beat the game, you can give Super Bubble Bobble a try. This is the original 100 levels, but way, way more difficult. Now, clearly, with so many levels, you'd have to be a literal god at gaming to make it through with the only three lives provided. However, there are ways to get extra lives. You see, if you kill multiple enemies at once, you'll get a combo. This is rewarded with those letter bubbles. Get all the letters to spell extend, and you'll get a 1-up and skip a stage. There's also 1-ups for so many points, and there's 1-up items. Even with that though, you'll probably still get massacred. Or maybe you just want to save and come back to the game later? While there isn't a saving option like in Zelda, there is a continue option and a password system. When you lose all your lives, you'll get a password that you can use back at the main menu, and this will put you back where you left off. Now, while I do love this game, in fact this is probably my favorite NES game, even more so than Mustached Italian Man, let's talk about some of the bad things. Have you ever heard of Pear Idoila? I think that's how it's pronounced. It's basically a term in part for that weird thing us humans do where we see faces and objects that don't have faces. Every other level in this game does that to you. Sometimes though the levels are pretty funny, like this one where you're turning your enemies into popcorn with these fire bubbles. But more often than that are levels that screw you over. See, as you progress through the game, either you master a secret core mechanic or you get so mad you turn the game off. Your character can actually use the bubbles blown as a mode of transportation. Now, you need to do this in order to complete certain levels, such as level 57. See, as a kid, I gave up once I hit this. You do this by continually jumping on the bubble. However, take this menorah looking area. It is so easy to get trapped in the spaces and there's no escape. The bubbles just burst on contact. So what happens now? 
oh, an alarm goes off, everyone gets real mad, and of course, a giant white ghost shows up and kills me. Baron Von Bubbles, no, no, Baron Von Blubba? This thing, unkillable. He shows up when you spend too much time on a level and the only way to beat him is to either die or complete the stage. So okay, you gotta worry about getting trapped, you gotta worry about Mr. Blubba. Now get ready for enemies you can only kill by cheating. How about levels with non-existent floors or walls? Levels which have you clip through the top of the map to enter through the bottom? Wow. Just keep thinking of those cool items. Just keep thinking of the cool items. Like those tennis shoes that make you fly at light speed. Necklaces that make a spiky lightning ball fly all around the screen. How about a cross that actually shoots lightning? A tiara that summons apples from the heavens. And best of all, the umbrella. This bad boy sends you past multiple levels. You know, these aren't even your main attack. It's supposed to be bubbles. Sometimes levels have their own bubbles. You've seen the fire one, then there's the lightning one, then there's the water ones. They send you crashing into monsters so hard they turn into crystals. Yeah, but here is the absolute worst thing about this game. Spoiler alert. Let's say you got no social life like me and you get to level 99. You're almost done. But hold up, you see that thing right there? That inexplainable object? If you know, you know. If not, well, just keep it tucked in your mind. It disappears almost instantly. Man, this level is hard. It's got all the bad elements I was talking about. Riding bubbles, non-existent floors, cheating enemies, and the Baron that shows up only seconds into the round. If you get through it, you'll be at the final boss, or halfway boss if you're gonna do the hard version. This dude named Super Drunk throws what I assume is empty beer bottles at you while your GF and the non-existent player 2's girlfriend hang up on the ceiling. Regular bubbles do nothing to this guy. What you need is this magical potion up top that shoots electric bubbles. Once you get it though, you'll most likely be dead before you can use it, and you'll have to go back and get it. I know it doesn't seem so, but it's so hard it belongs in a Castlevania game. And for only one reason, you have to hit him 60 times. You think that's a little too much, all while he flies around throwing bottles at you? Even more insane is the super version boss takes 80 hits. True story, this took so long I actually got up and made dinner at this point. The real way to beat this guy is to learn his pattern. You see, he moves around like the logo for a DVD player, and once you memorize that, it isn't too bad. Okay, okay, yes! Thank God. Wait, what? Bad end? This is not a true ending? Take the magical crystal ball and you will find the door to Secret Road? Yeah, this is one of the most famous troll moments in all of retro gaming. You remember that weird item on level 99 I was talking about? That's what it's referring to. It looks like any other object in this game, but it turns out it is the most important. Some people despise this game, especially for its ending blunder, but I'd still recommend it. I mean, it's a pretty cheap NES buy, and it will give you a lot of content. Hey, that's pretty good.